And you guys thought that I was actually done with the DSR clips? Haha, <laughs> boy were you guys wrong. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that collateral for the double kill in the beginning, and then picking up a triple kill right there. So anyways, with that being said, I wanna bring you guys on back to some Black Ops 2. Oh my god, with that C4 through the window. Love the AN-94, oh my goodness. Had so many great memories with this assault rifle. Again, the very first, um, I guess the loadout that I go to with SMGs in regards to that is the Scorpion. And when it comes to assault rifles, it has to be the AN-94. So you guys know now my two favorite weapons if you guys didn't know that already. Anyways, I want to talk to you guys about a few things. Uh, number one is the whole YouTube censorship thing. Uh, it gets into a little complicated matter in terms of describing it. So I'm just going to make it as simple as possible for you guys to understand it. Uh, basically, these advertisers are pulling their ads. Um, this sort of revenue for the bigger youtubers and mainly you're hearing complaints from bigger youtubers us small-time youtubers who barely make a cent or two off of our videos Doesn't really apply to us as much, but for the bigger youtubers who make a living off of YouTube Obviously you guys know that it makes a little bit more of a difference to them, right? Some for some of them. It's their livelihood so I can kind of see where it makes a huge difference, but basically these, these advertisers are pulling their ads from certain YouTube videos that are offensive in nature, racist, or incite some sort of violence or terrorist activities. Um, but they are taking it kind of over the top, and it seems like they're, they are putting a lot of channels on the blacklist for even swearing, like the littlest thing that you could think of, just swearing. Can you believe that? I think these companies are just trying to pull their ads from you know, certain videos that they don't want to align themselves with and they want this, you know, holy image of themselves. So I think, personally, it, it's a problem with the political correctness. Uh, PC culture is just cancer. I think it's gotten way worse and it's something that I feel is bringing down a lot of fun stuff in the world, like where it used to be okay, you know, people used to just have fun and didn't have to worry about offending anyone. And now it's just like any little thing you have to worry about and it's it's kind of sad to be honest I, I don't agree with it but again that's the way the world is going and so be it but um again if, if i had a choice I, I personally wouldn't recommend it and it's not something that i believe in but these advertisers apparently do because of all the people taking offense to the littlest and stupidest things but anyways enough about that let's talk about united airlines if you guys haven't heard already i'm sure you guys have in the news it was everywhere um uh, with the doctor being forced from the plane because the airlines or the airline overbooked you know personally i think that is wrong to be able to overbook and then remove a passenger because it's not really his fault but again um that passenger was a doctor so you know he had a legitimate reason he said he wanted to go visit uh his patients and he needed to be on this flight but at the same time most people don't even look at the other side they don't know the whole story even though i do agree that he shouldn't have been forcibly removed um the other side of the story is he wasn't really complying with the authorities so that's why they removed him but i want to know i want to know which <laughs> which attorney which lawyer took up this case uh because they're, they're probably thinking to themselves like oh my goodness this is easy money and obviously the passenger is gonna win his family is obviously gonna win this is an easy case to win it's a matter of how many millions they're gonna win? You know, the attorney, I, I can I can just see it now was just like, oh my goodness, I'm so happy. Not only do I get exposure for taking on this high profile case, but at the same time, I'm gonna get a whole lot of money. So, you know what? <laughs> all in all, not only does the family win, but also the lawyer who's representing this family wins. So that's pretty cool for them. Um, another thing I wanna talk to you guys about, which happened this week, is the Moab. <laughs> it's so funny. You guys saw in the news where the United States dropped a Moab, the mother of all bombs, on uh, a terrorist or ISIS stronghold in Afghanistan. We killed 34 militants, which was pretty good. Uh, it was uh, no casualties as far as civilians go. So that was basically a successful strike. But, you know, I've heard about the Moab from Modern Warfare 3. Oh my goodness, the devil game. I, if you like Modern Warfare 3, I'm sorry, but I didn't like Modern Warfare 3. I was no fan of Modern Warfare 3. But uh, it's funny to me how everybody was talking about the Moab after that. Um, let's go on, by the way, to the new gameplay over here on Raid. Oh my goodness, I, I remember Raid. This was the best map in Black Ops 2. I loved it. And going back on this map, 
brought back so many memories as well. But anyways, going back to the Moab, I saw so many people over social media talking about the Moab and everybody's like, you know, Trump finally got his 25 kill streak. Can he unleash the Moab? It was hilarious. I was just laughing when I was seeing all these memes and I saw all of these people posting about the Moab from Modern Warfare 3. Um, and it's funny to me also that people were going back onto the game and getting or attempting to get the Moab because they were so inspired by the Moab being dropped in real life, which is pretty crazy. And it's of course the largest um, non-nuclear bomb. Um, that, that's pretty insane to me. Like they actually dropped a Moab. <laughs> to, be, to be honest, I didn't even know the thing existed because sometimes, you know, Call of Duty is fantasy. So you don't really know whether things are just exactly that. They're fantasy or they're real life because, you know, Call of Duty has some things that are actually you know military related and other things that are just made up so to me when i first heard that this thing actually dropped i was like whoa this is a real thing i, I really didn't know it was a real thing or not so i found that out when it actually dropped and it was all across the news which is pretty cool and uh oh one, one other thing uh i think it was a day or two back i don't know i just read it today to be honest uh about united airlines like it seems like they can't catch a break so Actually, the latest uh, incident that happened, this was on Thursday actually, was that they they found that a scorpion actually dropped from an overhead bin on a United Airlines flight and it actually stung a passenger. <laughs> so in, imagine in the same week or two that they have this news of this passenger being forcibly removed for an overbooked flight and now there's a freaking scorpion we're first of all okay by the way this was a flight that you know was from houston to canada so where in the world were where, where, where did the freaking scorpion come from like what this didn't make any sense but anyways yeah a freaking scorpion came down from an overhead bin and freaking stung a passenger so they have that now in the news so i read about that like it seems like United can't catch a break and seeing all the United Airlines um, You know just sort of memes that are all across the internet is just funny to me I mean, I I also saw a Southwest Airlines which made uh, made fun of United by saying Here at Southwest we beat our competitors not our passengers, which was pretty hilarious and there are way uh, way more memes and a lot of uh, you know social media posts that I've seen making fun of United Airlines But it's just hilarious to me. This week has been just absolutely crazy, right? There's a lot to talk about a lot that happened and uh, a lot of views to be covered. So I, I feel like uh, uh, today's age uh, where you know social media and the digital digital age is just evolved where everything is accessible and everything just gets put out there there's a lot of information that we can talk about and uh you know obviously have fun with so i i think it's a great time we're living in obviously going back to the whole pc culture that's something that i feel is degrading to um our society but there are a lot of other things that, that makes it easily accessible for us to just um, get access to and uh, have a lot of information at our fingertips so you know it all in all it is a great time we're living in and you know we can just talk about these things uh, and just make fun of them all together and you know <laughs> going back to the Moab I never thought I never thought a Moab was real and we actually dropped it my goodness Modern Warfare 3 Oh my, going back to that game. Anyways, having a lot of fun playing Black Ops 2. I don't know about you guys. I thought I thought 75k was a lot of people. But guess what? 130, 145, 175 players in Black Ops 2. And keep in mind that this is only on one console. Imagine if this was all across the board and this was on the PlayStation as well. We would be seeing staggering numbers staggering amount of people playing this game and by the way why doesn't playstation have backwards compatibility that doesn't make any sense to me why playstation what are you guys doing anyways that's all for today's commentary i hope you guys enjoyed it i'll catch you guys on the next one this is gcp and i am signing off